everyone, it's Laura with Scrambled Crafty Brain. Today we are going to experiment with cork fabric. Home Sewing Depot sent me some pieces of cork fabric to review and to play with and see what I could come up with. So here are two of them. There's the natural cork right here. Isn't that just gorgeous? And then she also sent me a piece of this orange. And she sent me some gray. I've already been playing with the gray a little bit. So this is pretty much all I have left of it. So did get gray as well. But today we're going to play with the orange. So I'm like super excited about it. I have an idea for it. I've already done a test similar to what we're going to do. But first let's talk about the cork fabric. So I don't know a whole lot about how the cork fabric is made. I do know that they take layers of the cork and adhere it to some sort of fabric. So for this fabric that's on the back of this cork is actually very thick. It's like almost canvas. It's a lot like canvas. So I was really worried uh, when she was telling me about it that you know if I were to embroider on it that the cork would kind of fall apart because I had never used cork fabric before uh, but now that I've got it in my hot little hands it, it's really it's really stout it's it's maybe I don't know a sixteenth of an inch thick and it's I mean it's got some heft to it I, I'm pretty surprised so we're gonna play with the orange today and if we have enough time, maybe we'll get to the, the natural as well. So I'm going to roll these up and kind of get them out of the way and show you and then what I'm going to be doing with them. So let me set this one aside. We'll keep out the orange one because that's the one we're going to be playing with. So I did an experiment with the gray piece, which is why this is a funky looking scrap now. So I wanted to see how well the cork fabric would hold up to embroidery. So I purchased some embroidery designs that I thought would look good with all three of the colors that I received. And um, I'll have links to everything below, of course. And so um, the three that I got were, the three designs that I got were a pumpkin, an acorn, and a leaf and they're supposed to be large enough to be able to be used for coasters and i thought the cork fabric would you know make a good material for coasters so i went ahead and got those patterns um i've only tried one of the three which was the acorn and i tested that out on the gray cork fabric and this is how it turned out it did really well. I was really quite surprised. So this is a back. It's got cork on the back as well. But it held up spectacular with the embroidery. So I figured with the orange, we'll go ahead and do a pumpkin since it's fall. And this is such a beautiful color. It reminds me of pumpkin. So we're going to go ahead and do the pumpkin one on here. So I have already set up all of the... Um, designs in my machine so this is the um, tack line for the pumpkin uh, so what I did is I printed these off but I also made copies so that I can cut them apart so there's two pieces there is the front piece right here and the back piece now this is the front this is the back and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these down to the squares here, just the paper. I'm gonna cut those down to the squares, and then I'm gonna use some temporary spray adhesive to tack those squares onto, whoa, onto the cork fabric. The temporary adhesive I'm using is this 202 paper pattern spray. It's meant to, you know, spray it on the back of your sewing patterns and put it onto your fabric when you cut and that way you don't have to use as many pins and stuff like that so i'm going to use this on the back of the paper and cut the shapes out so 
I can't use this in my craft room. I gotta go use it outside. So you won't get to see me use it, but you'll get to see me cutting and everything like that. So I will be right back. Also, before I get too much further, this one says front and this one says back. Since I'm gonna be cutting these out, I wanna make sure I can tell which is which. So I'm gonna just go ahead and write on here that this one is the back and this one is the front. And now I'm going to go cut those out and spray them. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have sprayed it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one right there. And then here's the back. And I'm going to put that one right there like that. And now I'm going to cut the squares out. Let me get this out of the way, right there like that. And cut that down. All right, so I'm gonna start with the front and I'm just going to basically cut right along that outline there. Okay, there we go. So we got the front and back pieces. Now what we need to do is fill the hoop. So this is Tearaway Stabilizer. I don't remember what brand this is, but I will put, because this is just a piece I had in my, in my stock. Um, but I will put a link in the description below of one of my favorite places to get stabilizer. There we go. Tighten that up. Okay, so now we are going to be moving over to the sewing machine. I have to warn you that I will be recording how it embroiders. However, it does make everything shake. So if the camera starts shaking, I apologize for that. Uh, but at the moment, that's about the best that I can do. So hopefully you can see everything. Hopefully it's not too annoying uh, so that you can see how it, how it embroiders on the cork fabric. So let's head over there. Okay, so we've embroidered the first step, which is the outline. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the strings in the back. Like that. Okay, so the first thing to do is to take the front piece right here, and peel this off, and we're gonna lay it right in there. So to make sure it doesn't move on me, I'm gonna spray the back with adhesive. So I will be right back. Okay, so let's line that up right in there. Like that. That looks pretty good. Make sure that's good and stuck. All right, let's go back over to the machine.
Okay, so that did an outline right there. Normally, I would come in here and trim these little little strings hanging off. You don't have to because it's going to end up getting hidden anyway. But it's a habit. I just do that. So the next step is it's going to embroider the design on here. And so I didn't have to take it out of the machine to go to the next step. But I wanted to explain what the next step is. So let's go back to the machine.
Okay, there we go. Look at how beautiful that is turning out. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, so again, I'm going to trim the little trimmies off. They're like that. So the next step is to take the back piece and put it right on there. I think I want to trim this part down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to put that right on there. So this is on the back. There's the front. So on the back, we're going to put this right on there. So I'm going to use spray adhesive, the temporary spray, spray adhesive, to make that stick on there. So I will be right back. And let's put that right on there. Like that. I'm just really lightly kind of pressing it there so I can flip it over and then press it. And that way it doesn't shift everything inside of here. Go. All right, let's go sew the last step. Okay, so here it is. Let's trim the little trimmies. There we go. All right, wow, that is so pretty. That looks really cool with the, the cork. Actually, kind of looks like a pretty good pumpkin there. You know how pumpkins have all those divots and everything in them? That is super cool. All right. So, remember that outline that it sewed into the, the stabilizer? You wanna make sure you rip that part out too. You wanna try to get the stabilizer from within underneath these edges here. So, cause it's gonna wanna just tear right at where that thread was. Let's see, there's that thread there. You want to try to get to the stabilizer that's down in here too. 
So I have not found a spectacular way of doing that just yet. But I do know pulling this one thread does help. So now you just got to go through and get the little wispies that are in between these two layers of fabric. Which gets a little tricky because we use the adhesive. So the um, stabilizer just wants to stay in there because it's sticking to it. So it gets a little tricky for getting these little fluffs out. So I'll work on that and get those out. I won't take up all your time with you watching me get the little fluffs out. But look at how beautiful that is. Isn't that gorgeous? Here's what the back looks like. There's the front. That is so gorgeous. And with the the cork fabric the way that it is. And the... It just makes it look so much better. I love it. The fabric held up spectacular. Had zero issues. The needle that I was using was a 7010 uh, micron extra sharp needle and because I didn't want the the holes to be too big because I was you know it's cork fabric so I didn't think it was going to be very forgiving for the needle holes so I tried to use the thinnest sharpest needle I could get my hands on and that seemed to work perfect so that's how that turned out so here's the acorn and the pumpkin. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, so isn't that really, really pretty? I love it. I love it so much. This held up great. It did great, and they look spectacular. So next up is the leaf. So let's get to that. Look at that. It is so pretty. So there it is. Okay, so yeah, you just need to get in between those two pieces to get the that part out and just tear it right out. So, I'll spare you watching me do that, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that so pretty? And that's the back. And the cork just held up so well. I can still move it around. No issues. No cracking, no flaking. Awesome. Love it so much. So here are all three. We've got the leaf and the pumpkin and the acorn. I think that is a really cute coaster set. So one really, really quick experiment. I was thinking because these are going to be coasters, I need to think about whether or not I need to seal these since, you know, some drinks, you know, might leak on here a little bit or have condensation or something like that. So I thought I would do a really quick um, experiment with a piece of the cork, just a scrap of it. And I thought I would get it wet and let it sit for a little while and see how, see how it does. And then that will let me know whether or not I need to seal these. So I will go get my water and we will try that out okay so in this corner I'm gonna do big drops and in this corner I'm just gonna spray it there we go 
So I got sprayed. And then this side, I'm just gonna do some big drops. Okay, so that was just water. So this side I sprayed, this side I did drops. So I'm gonna let it sit here for a little bit and see how it reacts. So we'll be right back. Okay, so it's been about 12 hours since I walked away from this piece right here where I sprayed it with water. Sprayed water on this side and I did droplets on this side and I sprayed it and then I walked away and I came back about 15, 20 minutes later, still completely wet. Came back an hour later, still completely wet. Came back a few hours later, still completely wet. So yeah, I gave up for the night and I let it just sit there overnight. So the side that was sprayed is the side right here. And this side did dry faster, but I don't see any any evidence that there was a problem with the water being on it. And then this side right here, the there was this one big, big droplet that was over here. That one took forever to dry, but I don't see any evidence of it there either. So, I think water on here is okay. I mean, not really large amounts, but like if you were to spill uh, onto these or like you have a, a drink sitting on there and it's got condensation. I think as long as you wipe it down for the most part, it should be fine. So I don't think I need to, uh, seal these in any way. I think they're, they're going to be great just the way they are. If you wanted to see this up close, this side was sprayed, this side had droplets and I can't feel a difference. I can't see a difference. It looks like it handled it just fine. See the back. Yeah, there's no evidence of it on the back either. So, yeah, I think that held up really, really well. Uh, the other thing, while I was waiting for these to dry, I was trying to, like, work around the remaining space. So that's why these have kind of moved a little bit. Uh, to try to play with some other things. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and die cut that out. The little oval there. Now, I have to say the die, um, I used a metal die which is, this is a bigger one, but I used a metal die like this, just your typical die, and I ran it through my uh, die cutting machine, and it did cut through the cork, but it did not cut through the fabric. So what I did is I just kind of, kind of bent it like that so that the, um, the cut part would kind of open up a little bit, and I just cut the fabric. So it still came out pretty good. I thought that would be like a cute little button or clasp on um, element on, you know, like maybe a notebook or something or a wallet. And then I wanted to see how this uh, dealt with ink. And so I took a heart stamp and I used, where did my ink go? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. So I took a heart stamp and I just stamped it with some plum archival ink and it did pretty well. It bled a little bit, but for the most part, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. And it's not moving. It dry, it took a few minutes for it to dry, but once it dried, it's, it's on there pretty good. So I thought that was pretty cool. And so I tried it again on another piece with an open heart and yeah it turned out really good so i was playing with these while i was waiting for that to dry but uh so yeah i thought this was all pretty cool i'm, I'm really liking this this cork fabric I'm trying to think of other things that i can make with it so if you have any ideas leave me a comment below 
thank you so much to Home Sewing Depot for sending me the, the cork fabric to try out. I love it. If you would like to get your hands on some of this cork fabric, I will leave a link for them below. And, uh, you know, come check out Scrambled Crafty Brain on Facebook or on Instagram. You could check out the uh, website at www.scrambledcraftybrain.com or head on over to my Patreon page uh, where I have patron-only access to a number of, of uh, projects that I'm working on. Uh, so go check that out. And of course, and always, if you like this video, hit subscribe so you can get notified of more videos coming if you hit that little bell. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And again, thank you Home Sewing Depot. This was awesome. You guys have a great day. Bye.